It's been described as one of the best kept secrets in the US government. The US African Development Foundation. The agency has been around for 40 years investing in African owned and African led enterprises across the African continent. But have you ever heard of it? Well, its new president and CEO, Travis Adkins, says he's not surprised and he wants that to change. He wants to transform this agency into, as he put it, a hub for Africa, for Africans and the African diaspora. And also for U.S. government officials engaged with the continent. And he's here with me today in studio to tell us in his own words. Travis Adkins, welcome. So nice to have you. Thanks for joining me here on Straight Talk Africa. Haiti, thanks so much for having me. It's my pleasure to be here. Now I know you would be one of the first people to admit that people don't really know much about the US African Development Foundation. Why is this referred to as one of the best kept secrets in the US government? Sure, you know in some ways I think it's reflective in the West of the dearth of knowledge that people have about the Africa region uh, writ large and so as the only US government agency solely committed to Africa uh, it befalls us um, as well. And so, as you mentioned in the opener, one of my missions uh, is to change that, to elevate the profile of the agency, to elevate the approach of our work, which is um, African-led, African-owned development. We are an agency committed to 100 percent uh, African development, which means that we don't arrive on the continent with our idea of how African people should be proceeding uh, with their own economic and development and livelihood uh, engagements, but that we take their lead uh, in how they should do it and then we invest directly uh, in their efforts uh, and their entrepreneurial enterprises. And is that the primary difference between USADF and USAID, which is perhaps more well known on the continent? And you come from USAID. Yes. What is the, the main difference between the two? Yes. Well, the main difference certainly is that we do take uh, the localized approach to development. Uh, we do not use intermediaries uh, such as U.S. NGOs uh, to do our work through. Uh, we are investing directly in um, African entrepreneurs and, and social enterprises. Uh, and we were created by Congress to be uh, an independent agency uh, to do just that, uh, to make ourselves a friend uh, to the nations of Africa uh, and to try to go out and make friends for the United States on the continent of Africa. Uh, you are, of course, no stranger, of course, to the world of foreign policy and international development. Uh, tell us a little bit about you. Uh, sure. How much and how well do you know the African continent? And, sure. uh, you know, what was it in your career that brought you to this moment? Yeah, you know, this for me really has been a love story. And it's not so much uh, about a career trajectory, but for me, really a life uh, trajectory. When I was a very small child, uh, for as long as I could remember, I was taken uh, by the condition uh, that people in communities like mine were living under, uh, quite frankly, economically, educationally, lack of access uh, to health care and things of that nature. Uh, and as I got older and started to look out into the world, uh, the sad fact that I saw was that everywhere I saw a face like mine uh, on the African continent, in the Caribbean, in the Isles of the Pacific, uh, anywhere where there was an African diaspora, uh, you saw the same kind of, of suffering. Uh, and so initially, I wanted to understand it and learn about it and know what the history was, uh, what the policy context was uh, that created those conditions. Uh, and then I decided uh, that I wanted to use my life to do something about it. And on a professional level, how did you arrive at, at, at this moment? Sure. So as you mentioned, I, I just recently uh, departed the Biden administration uh, where I was the Deputy Assistant Administrator for Africa uh, at USAID. But uh, over the course of my career, we're talking now more than two decades uh, working on the continent uh, in conflict and post-conflict situations, uh, working in more than 40 countries um, on the continent, doing everything from development assistance to humanitarian assistance, uh, livelihoods, women and youth, uh, education and so forth. Uh, and so over the course uh, of those years, I'd like to think that I gave myself the credentials, the experience uh, and the breadth of knowledge uh, to take on a role like this with the U.S. African Development Foundation. And speaking of taking on that role, let's talk about your strategic 
plan for um, USADF. I've read that you want to make big changes. You really want to transform this agency. What needs changing here at USADF? Well, you know, the first thing I would say is the main thing I want to change is the lack of awareness of the agency. And I want to elevate it. I want our model of localized development to be seen for the powerful, impactful frame and lens that it is uh, in the way that we engage the continent. Uh, I want it to be known uh, that our staff in Africa is 100 percent um, African. I want it to be known that we invest directly and we don't use intermediaries, uh, that our focus is to make sure that African entrepreneurs and enterprises have the management skills and the technical skills to build their own institutions, uh, to make themselves credit worthy, uh, to make them free uh, ultimately of the need for any kind uh, of foreign assistance. And so that model uh, and that approach is what I think mainly needs to be elevated. Uh, and we are, I think, leaders uh, in the U.S. interagency in that way. And hopefully uh, that approach will spread as we think about uh, engaging Africa in a new and different way in the years to come. Yeah, and to your point, when, when one hears uh, foreign uh, assistance, you think obviously that's help, that's aid, uh, foreign aid. Uh, and we're all, of course, familiar with the debate around that. Tell us a little bit about some of your signature programs that mm -hmm. goes directly at that. How do you work on the ground, how do you work differently uh, than, than A does? Because I always wonder whether um, th th this is all about semantics, you know, does it, uh, whether it's aid or investment, how does it look on the ground that people mm -hmm. can clearly see this is an investment being made in us sure. and not just help arriving? Sure. I think one of the first things is to look at our people uh, in Africa who are African people. Uh, and so everyone who works for the US ADF on the continent is a national of the country uh, in which they work. And so their intuitive knowledge uh, of the cultures and context that they come from, uh, the fact that they are home. And so regardless of culture or conflict or climate, uh, we don't, uh, we're not in a situation where we're ever having to evacuate expats and things of that, of that nature. Uh, and because they have that local context, they can help us get to the root of problems uh, that are on the continent identifying them and helping us to target uh, the right demographics for the kind of assistance uh, that we give. And so I think one of the ways in which they're different, uh, we're different, I should say, Sur surely other agencies uh, believe in the model of participatory development, but we take it all the way to the max. And so all of our partners uh, own their initiatives uh, and lead those initiatives, and we support them from behind rather than from the front. Well, well, Africa itself is, is really taking it all to, to the max right now with the Africa continental free trade uh, area. Of course, it has um, been rolled out. And, and of course, we're keeping an eye uh, as uh, reporters and journalists on how this free trade zone, especially here on this show, we're looking at how this will help women um, and women business owners, whether it be in the formal or the informal sector. This is um, an exciting time and opportunity for them to be part of something bigger. Are there any sorts of investments that you you are making in women that, that could potentially help them um, take part in this opportunity of um, this free trade pact. Without a doubt, Haiti, I think or one of the things that I would like to say is that often in our field, women and youth uh, are spoken of as a kind of special interest group uh, when in fact they actually are the majority um, on the continent, a kind of marginalized majority, um, if you will. And so a majority of our focus is on women, is on youth, and of course among youth are also women. And so they are uh, the primary target of our grant making, of our technical assistance um, and support. We do have an off-grid energy challenge uh, that is for women leaders in the renewable energy sector. Uh, we do support uh, with grant funding uh, graduates of the Academy for Women Entrepreneurs, which is a program uh, of the State Department. And we look not just to mainstream efforts uh, that support women and youth, but to make that the, the bread and butter of what our agency is focused on. And you are well aware, of course, that we do have a huge unemployment problem on the continent. The statistics show that it's not as bad that amongst young people in terms of them being completely unemployed, but a lot of them are employed in the informal sector. Yes. What kind of resources uh, do you have and plans do you have to help 
address that? If, if there were young people watching today thinking, you know, if, if they were to see you in town or, or see your work or your projects, what would be in it for them? Sure. I think that, you know, youth development and youth employment is one of the three pillars uh, that are primary to what our agency is seeking to do. And so one of the things that we do distinctly is we don't just do employment training, but we also do employment placement. And so you would not come uh, into a U.S. ADF funded program and only receive training and then be left to your own devices to actually find an employer. So we would partner with employers and partner with youth training initiatives to make sure uh, that graduates who receive vocational training from U.S. ADF supported programs would then be funneled into uh, direct jobs and that's something that we've done uh, to great effect in Nigeria, uh, in places like Somalia uh, and elsewhere on the continent. Now I've read you, you have plans for Africa here in the United States and in Washington. Uh, I've read that you've said that you want to, uh, you want to create uh, a hub here for Africa, for Africans and the African diaspora. Uh, what does that mean and what will that look like? Sure. Well, I think that we have a special responsibility uh, as the only U.S. agency solely committed to Africa uh, to engage with the African diplomatic corps uh, in an ongoing and frequent and uh, impactful way uh, that we have the ability uh, to be a voice in this space through the think tanks uh, in Washington, through universities in Washington, through schools uh, in Washington, uh, to be an educating force uh, about what is happening on the continent of Africa, about the varied approaches uh, that USADF takes uh, towards the continent. And then, of course, uh, another element uh, of my tenure that I would like to have at the forefront is this notion of engagement uh, with the diaspora. And I take uh, the broad uh, definition of diaspora, not just first and second generation Africans who have recently arrived, uh, but those of us uh, who have been detached from the continent for a much longer time, uh, of course, generations uh, in the case of the members of my community, uh, engaging those folks uh, in education and civic involvement with the continent, but also looking at ways that they can become involved in investing uh, in, in, uh, in Africa. And as we were talking now, you're, you're no stranger to the African continent. You've traveled extensively uh, and you have visited many African countries. So now you are on your way to Cote d'Ivoire and Senegal. Uh, why are you making this trip and why those two countries? Yeah, it's really exciting for me, Haiti, because this is the first uh, trip of my tenure. I was just sworn in about three months ago. Uh, and no one uh, from the uh, agency has been to the continent essentially since the advent of COVID uh, two years ago. And so for me, it's an opportunity to get to the continent, to meet our partners, to see our programs on the ground, and then specifically in Senegal and Cote d'Ivoire to really to launch new initiatives uh, that we're partnering on with those governments uh, for youth entrepreneurs, uh, for smallholder farmers, uh, and looking at issues of renewable energy um, as well. And so I want them to be able to attach a new face uh, to the name of the agency uh, and to then to begin crisscrossing the continent uh, with the message that we have uh, to uplift and elevate uh, not only the agency, uh, but the standard of living for the people of Africa.